everyone how are you doing today i can all I, i can see the excitement in the chat already i know that you all are excited to create a health pack today because let's face it during this lockdown i mean in india is the second time we're entering into a full lockdown zone and we just came out of it but we are not at all doing anything whatsoever for our fitness and today by creating this health app we are taking the first step towards it But before that, let me welcome a couple of you folks. All of you are doing. Uh, how are actually? Let me ask you something. How was day one? And so far, how was day two at MLH in it? Aren't you all excited? I mean, as much as I am. What's up with you? I want to know all the internal gossip. Like, what's happening in your girls? Share some cool stories in the comment section. Should be. I mean, this is amazing. A blast. Super excited. Nice. I love to see it. Love to see it. day one was super like what was the one thing that was that you were super excited about i heard that there was some amazing highlights in yesterday's leaderboard oh my goodness which one was your favorite day one and day two are amazing incredible learning and experiment is like who who are you who of you all are like joining for the first time in any of the mlh events like they are here at their first event in mlh because today is the day we are going to give you a huge shout out the community will give you like a huge shout out because uh it is incredible okay mohammed is here is joining us for the first time incredible ayush is also here for the first time mansi all right first event raj <laughs> oh my goodness there are a couple of folks here who are joining us for the first mlh event uh welcome to the community everyone we are super super excited to see you here and it's a great community you'll all love it here uh if in case you have like any issues or like just want to chat or talk something the community loves to chat there's one thing that this community does and that is talk and talk about random things together and you'll love it you love it it's absolutely thrilling and amazing Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, actually this is absolutely true. If you missed day 1, you should definitely check out the highlights to get like up on speed. There are a lot of jokes going out in in Discord that I saw that everyone was chatting so much about the first day. The hype is real. I'm telling you that. <laughs> okay, the one chill and bright bright channel, I don't know your name, so I'll go with your username, but hey everyone, how are you doing? Okay so somebody just mentioned that their favorite part about MLH in general is TNR and I couldn't agree more it's my favorite part as well i mean uh, i saw that in yesterday's leaderboard they were asked to name your like you were asked to name your favorite duo and somebody mentioned TNR and his Hawaiian shirt i mean kudos to you my friend that was incredible <laughs> wow You enjoyed the elastic security event. Thank you so much. I led this one yesterday for any of you who are joining right now. Uh, and sketchful. Oh, we had a ton of fun at sketchful. And the okay. So since you're in today on today's strategy on today's live stream, I'll tell you a joke that happened yesterday. So we were playing sketchful live here on MLS stream. We do this thing. We take over the MLS stream and we try not to give it up to any of the other coaches because we have so much fun here. But uh, Yesterday we were forced to leave the stream at uh, ex like exact in exactly an hour because the schedule decided that uh, their server decided that it's the time for their daily uh, restart to like like they wanted to the daily server restart I suppose and they were giving it giving it so it was like they were giving us some countdowns in between that it's in 15 minutes there's a server restart so we knew this is the point where the game ends and whoever's winning uh, is definitely done but hey the exciting part of this hundred of uh, like. we participated in about uh, i mean the highest number i think it that went was 107 i'm not sure uh, somebody might correct me on that but hundreds of folks participated and then uh, the server shut because of server shutdown we couldn't go for a round two hmm somebody asked what is tnr anybody want to help them out in the comment section i mean i'll definitely tell you the story about tnr but i mean Uh, I better yet, you should definitely join us for the leaderboard. There's a leaderboard tonight at 12 p.m. Eastern, and I mean, you'll know all about TNR then. Somebody did mention, so I'll give you a hint. It's totally not Ryan, right? He's a favorite hacker. He leads the hacker community, and right now he was, uh, he's on a quest of figuring out who the mascot is. Yesterday, he gave us a hint that it might be a fish, and the co like. the like the, there's something fishy around here and because the community loves the hatch it might be fish 
but you will not know. He's not trying. Yeah, he's not trying. Totally not trying. I think this is one duo we'd love to watch, wouldn't we? TNR and Ryan for paired programming? Agreed, agreed. I mean, we should definitely go up on, to, like, we should definitely tweet uh, this on Twitter and ask Ryan to, like, invite TNR for a programming stream online. Oh, so you have some, uh, okay, this is an interesting question. I want to know what your thoughts are. Uh, who do you think the mascot is? Okay, I'll tell you something very honestly. Even I don't know who the mascot is. And I don't think anybody else does as well. Uh, among the coaches, of course. So, I mean, I want to know. Like, we are as, like, uh, my, guess, my guess is at, as good as yours. So, tell me, what do you think? Who do you think the mascot is? I personally like the fact that it might, it might, might have been Flamingo. Or, like, for now, if let's say it's Fish. I like Fish, uh, too. But uh, I'm not sure what the name or the uh, tech tag would be. Frying the fish. <laughs> yeah, I saw this yesterday. Nice. Totally not frying. This is something we should definitely pitch. Totally not frying the fish. <laughs> uh, I, okay, I'm awake 24 7 because of the MLH live streams. No, uh, absolutely. I mean, now that you talk about it that way i was up pretty late last night because i was prepping for this stream and yesterday i was with you all in a three and a half hour stream and we were talking non-stop uh so yeah pretty much i'm awake <laughs> but i think i'm not awake 24 7 so i'll tell you something i'm not sure if adam is here in the comment section but adam is the one who's awake 24 7 for led streams i mean he is there in every one of the streams every one of the challenges and you should definitely uh i mean i definitely am so inspired to see him uh being so involved oh it's the stream last aws stream is for him yeah i heard i heard i heard, also heard that it was a very interesting stream agree now an interesting question. Someone did ask an interesting question, which is what will we do today? All right, friends. So here's it. All right. Listen up, everyone. What are we going to do today? So as you can already see from uh, the title somewhere here or here, I mean, mirroring. So, you know, <laughs> I suck at mirroring. Uh, but yeah, so this one, for this one, uh, we're going to create a health app, right? Now, I want to keep it as beginner friendly as possible because as you can see, there are tons of folks who are joining us for the first time for an MLH event and we want to make you all feel welcome. We want you to take that first step towards learning something new. The main idea behind this is not just to create a health app, but to get you all set up and started for creating Android applications. It's very interesting. I absolutely love it. And the first time I created my uh, app my health app it was it was the best feeling ever because it's like once you get started it uh it's it paves way for everything else and it's easier for you to do so uh, this is one thing that i've learned is that you don't need help to do advanced stuff you need help to actually get started to understand the basics so that you can understand the advanced stuff advanced stuff is, is something you can you know do it on your own at your own pace whatever you want to learn how you want to do it there is a solution up on uh, up on like there. There would be tutorials. There would be blogs. There would be documentation. The main task is to understand that documentation from behind, uh, like from the start, and how to navigate through it. What is it that you need to search and everything? So that is what we're gonna do. And I'm glad to see that you agree to it. I think I missed a couple of uh, like explaining what we're gonna do today. I just missed a couple of comments. So just questions questions oh we have shout outs for adam absolutely adam for those of you who are joining us for the first time adam is a proud member of lahal Gang. if you want to see and check check out uh some of the wonderful guilds that we have head over to discord and find your favorite guild and join us there yes okay <laughs> okay we have so many of us was first time same story yes keep it in an easy way is our motto we I'll explain everything. I'll explain from the basics. I want you all to ask tons and tons of questions so that you all are ready to create your own Android application after this one. But for today, we're going to create a step counter, which is pretty simple, pretty easy, basic steps. I'm going to, uh, you know, talk about everything in detail. I'm going to talk about Android applications and I'm going to talk about how to create a step counter and what is it that we're going to use today. Uh, the tech we're going to use. So we'll be working with Kotlin. Um, and we use some of the XML files for layout, of course. But yeah, that's about it. 
you don't know anything about Android, absolutely like don't worry at all. There is not even a single worry in this particular live stream because we started from the very basics. We're gonna start it. And if you have any confusion, like any doubts, any of the issues in between, let me know and I'm gonna help you out with that. But meanwhile, while we are setting this all up, if you probably don't have Android Studio, that is something you should definitely, definitely download. Right. Java and Kotlin. Uh, timing for Indian hackers really sucks. I mean, I'm definitely going to take that up with Brian. This is something that should not be the case. <laughs> All right. So the first thing that we do before we start any live stream, what is it, friends? What is it? What is it? Let me know, and then I'm going to share that with you. <laughs> I mean, you all know the drill by now. You all know that is how we start our daily event. So, yes. And this time, Eddie Hub was the first, uh, like someone from Eddie Hub, I think, was the first one to, okay, the stream is prepping. But the first one to mention this, we will check in and we give a boo. Absolutely. There are these two steps that we definitely follow. So, let me just share the check in link with you all. There you go. Check in now at hackp.ac slash help and do it right now do it right now it's really really important that you check in and i'll tell you why it's for us to earn points for our guilds for all the work that we do and for also for us to show off whatever it is that we're trying to do here and the, what's the best way to show off your skills Brad, like tweet check in and tell all your guild members about the exciting events that are happening so that they also can join in on the fun and we do it together Right, so somebody did share the link in the comment section, but I'm going to share it with you as well. All right, so we have Harshil from MLX. Oh my goodness, he is here. Let's give him a warm welcome in the comment section. And he has an interesting question. Where can I join the Sash kit? Now, the thing is, Sash does not have a kit. Sashuka has a gang right here on stream. So we all, like every day at 12 p.m. IST, we gather here to you know, create, uh, fix some of the challenges, finish them, submit them, and earn a lot of points to make it top of the, to the top of the leaderboard. That is our goal. But we do have a Bihaj gang, of which I'm part of. If you want to join, please definitely go sign up. We also have a Hackon gang with, by another one of our incredible coaches, Aditya. He's also hosting that. So if you want to join one of the coaches' guilds, these are the two I know of. But I know that there are tons and tons of interesting ones. For example, I want to give a shout out to Eddie Hub here. Someone is here from Eddie Hub. So really interesting that one if you want to join it. And I think there is another one that I that someone pointed out yesterday. Let me see what the name of that guild was. It was pointed up on the live stream. And that was the best guild that I've ever seen because there were only four members in that guild. And they had the highest activity. I mean, incredible, incredible, incredible. We have someone from developer student community as well. And they are actually leading. So if you want to join that one. Uh, then we have someone from hack at MUACM. I mean, what's the full form? I mean, I'm not sure, but yeah, interesting. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Uh, I mean, I want to give that. I want to give a shout out to that particular guild because that was absolutely incredible from what I see. Mm -hmm. Cracking factory. So cracking factory. I'm not sure if someone is here from cracking factory, but there are only four members in their guild, and they have the maximum activity and so many points lovely absolutely lovely yes i am also a member proud member of the hash gang and i see some of my fellow guild members right here are supporting me on stream wonderful lovely absolutely love that so if you've not already checked in friends please 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 do check in and happy.ac slash health this is your link and you need to do it right now i'm going to do it with you in just a minute but i want you all to be set up for this one okay 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 now we're not going to give any other you know more shout outs to a couple of guilds i'm just going to give two more shout outs because i see them there there's base camp and there's server monks if you want to check them out uh but whatever it is i named like a ton and ton like i think i'm not sure even sure how many guilds i named but whatever so i named a lot of guilds and the tldr is that pick one pick pick the one where you feel most comfortable in someone where you think you can make more friends someone who think uh, is more welcoming and guild members get leaders i want you to know this 
the best way to you know expand your guild or probably introduce them to more members is to make them feel welcome the best way to is the, uh, the best way to go about it is to actually uh, welcome new uh, hackers in the community and help them out while they navigate through the, into this entire thing i know this must be overwhelming at first but this is something that we should definitely do as a community member so many guilds i agree there are so so many of them it's difficult to make a, cho make a choice I just joined the Hodge Gang yesterday when Adam pointed out, "Hey, Sashri, are you joining the Hodge Gang again today?" But uh, yeah, that's about it. That's how I ended up joining the Hodge Gang. Yes, for like to answer your question, you need to do download Android Studio. Uh, I'm waiting for like a couple of minutes so that other folks can join in on the stream. And at the same time, giving you some time to uh, to download Android Studio. It's going to take a few minutes of, like, to set up if you've not already done it yet. But if it's taking that much of time, don't worry. Come back live on live stream. Work uh, you know, through, through the entire code with me. Understand how it's created. And then once it's downloaded, you can replay the stream to check for what you missed. That's good. Oh, hey, Utkarsh. Utkarsh is also here. He's been very active throughout my live streams. Thank you so much for being so active, Utkarsh. All right. Yeah, uh, yes, so Android Studio, I think Mac can run it. Let me check. I'm not sure if it can. I mean, let me, uh, I'll have to check, honestly. Yes, I think you can. You can. It says you can. Good to go. All right. <laughs> this is the, uh, this is true story. If it's winter time, you can warm your hands with the CPU while running Android Studio. So Android Studio, the thing about it is it takes up a lot of RAM. So your PC would be burning up like anything. Uh, so I would recommend you close most of your tabs and everything so that you can actually run it. But yeah, that's about it. For the first time, it'll be a tough something tough that you're doing. But don't worry about it. Let it do, let it do its job. I mean, that is something that I'm going to tell you that. it Let it do its job. Linux or Windows. I'm using Windows. So I'm going to be coding up on uh, the Android Studio ID in right about a minute. But before that, it's time It's time to show how we check in. I know most of you have already done it. But for those of you who don't know, let us check in like right now. All right. So when you open up this link, the one that I shared, which is, I'll type it again for you, happy.ac slash. Okay, I'm not sure if my screen is visible. No, it's not. Absolutely not happens every time 49 tabs and three ids i'm gonna have to safely say it's time you close all of them up it's time you do that nope nope nothing uh no concept required nothing i'm going to explain you everything from scratch the only thing i need you to do is download Android Studio. No one's late. Let uh, let's all like check in, everyone. If you've not already done this yet, do it with me. Uh, you need to visit happy.ac/help, and when you visit this, it's going to open up the same screen that I am right about now. This is what it looks like. And can you see this blue type button right here? This one. You might miss it, but it's it's just there. Like trust me, believe me, everyone. It is there, and all you need to do is click on it to register and check in for this event. And as soon as you register and check in, this turns green and it tells you that you've checked into the event. Woohoo! Now we have earned ourselves a point. And now that we are through with that point, let's create an app and then earn ourselves, like earn more points. So if you have not done the step yet, now is the time. Absolutely. Go ahead and register hackp.ac slash health. Check in now. I've not already done it. Uh, I mean, you should you should definitely do it so that you know you want yourself a point i mean isn't that so bad is that so bad so everyone have you let me know in the comment section if you've already checked in and then we're gonna start creating our first health app i have to explain a couple of things to you before we actually create that android application so i'm going to share with some a few of the docs i'm going to share the entire process about how i find all of these things and then I'm going to talk to you about, you know, writing some code and creating that Android application. Sounds good, everyone? Awesome. Amazing. Amazing. 
all right have you all checked your machine is already heating up you should definitely close all of your tabs harshal you should definitely do it all right i cannot see a lot of folks who have checked in so you need to mention that in the comment section right now if you've already checked in so that i know you all are done with this first step <laughs> another instance of this live stream really <laughs> check in check in done check in wonderful 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 and if someone is not checked in already yeah uh, i mean just mention that and we will help you out we'll definitely help you out uh this live stream the comment section it's amazing everyone joins in here at 12 pm ist every day just to create get some points and i mean think about it the us time zone uh, is probably sleeping at this point time it's like midnight or so probably there so it's like uh, the apac region or the region where there is uh, a daylight time or something everyone is up and working on challenges to gain more points and then we work on we work through the night as well some of us so i mean who's going to stop us from winning and making to the top the top of the leaderboard right okay all right so everyone's checked in wonderful incredible super excited to see that and done okay some some of the folks just joined yes absolutely you did miss something we checked in we already did we did it without you now you need to go and check in right now at this link oh my goodness the stream is like super fast check in right now at hackbee.ac/help so that you are on the same page as everyone and then in just about 1 minute i'm going to start sharing my screen and talking through talking you through docs and what are we, what is it that we're going to do today but just to give you a brief we're going to create a step counter today you know just so you can reach your fitness goals and i would say you can probably try to reach your fitness goals because let's face it i mean we're not we're not we're not doing that we we're not we don't not do that in the entire lockdown i'm not sure if you this this can be the motivating factor you need and somebody pointed that out that i have a mood setter teddy yes absolutely i do that let me show that to you it's just right here so this is the most incredible incredible investment that you can make in your software edition i would say <laughs> yes it's the mood octopus it's lovely so for those of you who don't know and i think i should probably get paid for marketing stuff like this this is the mood octopus if you're feeling happy this is what you do but if you're not feeling happy and you're feeling sad or angry this is where the next one comes in oof right right isn't that scary I love it. I absolutely love it. It's just my mood setter thing. I scare me with this one. <laughs> nice. All right. So coming back up. Uh, like I think this particular live stream is the mood. Yesterday we were talking about gaming, and today we are talking about the mood octopus. Is there something else that we can do? Like we gossip, we chat, and we talk. It wasn't there yesterday. So what happened? Actually, it was there yesterday. but uh, my screen was tilted this way so you couldn't see it all right so you've got a lot of time to download and so i'll give you about like 15 minutes or so i hope that that was enough i don't remember how much time it took me to set up my android studio yes we can build a health app as well absolutely correct the stream can do multiple things all at the same time and now we're going to build a health app so let me share my screen and let's get started in create like for the task at hand and we're going to create a health app today yes you absolutely right i'm going to take one more question and that is that we are going to go in kotlin i love kotlin everyone should know that by now my favorite tool is kotlin can you show put up this app on your github and show it to the recruiters you can absolutely put this app on github and share it with in your resume uh, but i would suggest build something on top of that to make it your own and add your own spin to it all right meanwhile i mean it's all right if it's getting installed let it do its job what we're going to do right now is i'm going to share my screen share show some docs here and then i'm going to talk you through the entire thing that we're going to do today so that you're all set up and you have all the tools that you need right okay Let Android Studio start. Let it do its job. It's gonna, it's gonna take some time. And if you need five minutes, it will take me five minutes to explain every more than five minutes to explain uh, everything to you all. So uh, I hope that that is all right and I can start. 
let me know in the, co the comment section if you need a minute or two before I begin. And then we can start. Uh, can I use Visual Studio? Oh, good question. Um, I mean, so for Android Studio, the reason that we use that is for, for uh, I get a chance to like work through the emulators. I mean, and that is the reason that using that is completely fine with me. I'm not sure how that works with the VS Code because I personally develop a lot of Android applications and I use Android Studio for that. So you have to like find that out. Studio's downloading components, it will, it will. Hmm. Cool, all right, all right, friends, gear up. It's time to go. Are you all excited and hyped, hyped up? All right, everyone, get some hype in the comment section and show me that you are all excited for this particular session. And I'm gonna share my screen right now and I'm gonna start explaining to you what it is that we're gonna to do today. Don't worry if you things are downloading right now. Absolutely, there's not a single worry in the world. The, by the time I'll explain everything, it'll all be set up. Okay, all right. Incredible, incredible. Yes, let's go. It's, it's like a to the moon thing where, you know, the excitement is to the moon. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm excited too. Let's see. All right, let me share my screen. Before I do that, uh, I'm going to share my screen, but there are a couple of things that I want to tell you about this live stream. So as I said before, we're creating a step counter. Absolutely, right? Correct? Now, there are a couple of things that you should know. To create a step counter, what is this? What is the thing that you need? Now, you're creating an Android application in your mobile. That is correct? Absolutely. Yes, yes, let's go. Woohoo! I mean, I am excited too. To the moon. <laughs> I mean, this is something that we can use in our tweets. Whatever you tweet, if you write to the moon, I'll know that you were here in the stream at this very moment with me and you were as excited as you are right now. All right, make sure that you add that in your tweets. And speaking about tweets, if you're gonna make a tweet, this is the hashtag that you should use. And this is the tweet that you should, uh, you know, these are the two accounts that you can tag. There's ML Hacks, there's Sway, there's ML Hacks, and there's, this is my account, Sashra Kakor, if you wanna tag me. And I would love to see all of your tweets. I'm going to put up the check-in link for now. And there you go, to the moon. OK, all right. So a bunch of things. In the step counter, now you created an Android application. Now, what is it that you should do or you need to do in order to make sure that you know you are um, like, I think I should modify my question first. So right, uh, you're using your Android application in your phone right, to create a step counter. What is it in your phone that you use in order to create, uh, in order to make sure that your uh, phone senses whenever you take a step? Do you have the answer to that question? If you don't, don't worry at all. I mean, I'm just going through it to see what the crowd knows and what it doesn't so that I can explain you everything from the basics. Yes, motion sensor, absolutely correct. So there is a... Okay, gyroscope, gyroscope, sensors, sensors. All right, so let's get down to the basics, right? So we're moving, right? So we need sensors to detect if our phone is moving as well, whenever you're taking the step. Absolutely, right? We use the built-in sensors that they have. And in order to do that, Android Studio has an amazing library that you can use, and that is called Sensor Manager. That's it. So whenever you research about how to create a step counter or something like that, you'll come across this term Sensor Manager. And right now, I'm going to share that with you uh, to explain what a sensor manager is, what it does, and how you can you know access all of these multiple sensors, and you'll be very shocked to see the number of sensors that we have in a device. I mean, I'm going to show that to you right now, but it's interesting, and I love it. All right. So, uh, as I was saying, sensor managers. So, sensor manager is something that you use to manage all of the different sensors you have in a in a, in a mobile application, and then gain access. Your app can gain access to those sensors in order to get data and then do whatever job it's you know supposed to do. So somebody did share a Android developer link, sensor manager reference link uh, in Twitch. I'm gonna share that as well. This is what we will be looking at, but if you're gonna Google sensor manager Android docs, this is the same link that you're gonna get. Right, now, a, a couple of uh, other things that I wanna point out here is that Whenever you get started with Android applications, the first step you should definitely check out is the Android um, developer docs. It's, this, it's on the same link that we just shared. And it's an incredible place to you know get started, get all the information. It's got code labs, 
it's got things to get you started it's got all the basic understandings it also has the life cycle of android uh, app developments which you should definitely read i'm not going to cover that in the stream the life cycle but that is something you should definitely read if you're interested to know more about how apps work all right so sharing my screen let me know if you can see it all right, so I'm opening the sensor manager tab and there you go. All right, so this is another documentation and we were talking about sensor manager, right? Uh, let me just zoom in a bit so that you can see it here. All right, so sensor manager is another class that we've used. It lets you access device sensors as we just mentioned. So you have to make sure that you disable the sensors you don't need when your activity is paused. This is another great one of those tips that they share. And the reason that they share this tip, I'll explain that to you in a minute while you write writing that code. It's very important. But just to give you a brief, sensor manager will give you access to your sensors and then get that sensors to get your application, the data that you absolutely, absolutely need and require to you know, function. Ah, let's see. All right. So there are a couple of things that go on while writing a, a sensor manager and on a sensor event listener activity. These are the couple, these are a couple of functions that you should definitely have while creating a sensor event. And as you can see, there are tons and tons of things that uh, have that are happening in this particular code base. But don't worry, I'm going to explain each and every single one of these lines to you so that you have the basic understanding of what you need in order to complete the sensor manager, right? And uh, this sensor activity. So they created a sensor activity and they implement a sensor event listener. A sensor event listener, what is a sensor event listener here? A sensor event listener is uh, OK, let me tell you about the event listener first. The event listener is whenever there is a change that you are, you know, uh, that you need data from. Whenever there's a change in that event, this event listener has a task to listen to that change and then let you know whenever there is a change in you know, whatever it is that you're doing. For sensors, sensor event listener, it's definitely sensor. So when a sensor is changed, this app is constantly, this particular class is constantly listening to any change that happens in the sensor. and it's, entitled to report it to you and this is what the entire function like this is something basic not the entire detailed version of it but as basic as i can explain this is what sensor event listener does and in order to do that there are a couple of uh, functions that you need to implement when you uh, implement the sensor event listener and those functions are this one on accuracy change and on sensor change we're going to write code in on accuracy change uh, in on sensor change we not touch on accuracy change for this purpose but if you're changing devices, if your accuracy is changed from one device to another of your sensor, this is where you write that code as well. Yes, it's like a state management system for sensors. And languages you should use for your project, it can be Java, Kotlin, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm going to be using Kotlin today. Right. So there are a couple of other things that you can see, like just to get a brief idea. This particular uh, design is using accelerometer, right? We're going to use app sensor, so that would be different. But for now, they are using accelerometer. And what they did was create a sensor manager, get the accelerometer, and then register their listener in order to register, like get access to any changes. This one is Java code. You're absolutely correct. We're gonna, I'm going to write with Kotlin, but you can you know, use this application as a reference if you want to write the Java code. Can you make this project with Flutter? Absolutely. I mean, we're not covering Flutter right now uh, today, but if you want to do that, you can say through the live stream, understand how it works, and then create that uh, using Flutter. All right, so you can register listener on resume and on pause is when you unregister your listener. I'm gonna explain why we did that, how we did it, and what other things it means here, but this is just about some of the things you should know about. So there are a couple of things that we cover here. We covered what, what a sensor is, we covered what a sensor event is, and we covered what a sensor event listener is. You can know more about by clicking any of these links. You also have the docs here. But now let us talk about a couple of other things, right? So as, I, as you can see, there are a couple of variables that we were using in our application. And this is where those variables come in. So there are cups, there are some constants, there are some variables that we've already initialized. And this is something that you can use. So for example, you want to see the gravity, you want to get some values in place. This is you know some of the other things that you can do if you want to use the accelerometer sensor. If you want to use a delay UI or a magnetic field sensor or an orientation draw proximity sensor, you can you see can, can you see that temperature sensor, gravity sensor? There are tens of things that you can do through this, right? And then you can see that there are a couple of methods for this as one. 
if you want to cancel a trigger, if you want to create a direct channel. Now, now that, do you understand how I was why I was saying that these docs are incredible? They contain everything that you need to understand about the Android application. Whatever feature you want, there is a uh, you know there is a method available for that that you can use to write your own code and then make it more customized for your own self. So you can create a bunch of other things. You can get altitude, for example, you want to get the default sensor, stuff like that, and it's a really, really, really long list of things you want to do. Right. So you can read about that, and I'm not going to cover more of this one in this doc in this live stream because we want to move forward and write some code. But uh, I want to just give you a point and a shout out basically here to this particular doc that you can refer to, and then um, then you can go through it. Are we going to use any Android library or are we building from that? We're going to use Tensor Manager and we're going to use Kotlin to develop our entire application. We're not building anything like from scratch, scratch, but this is what we're going to, this is where, this is where the starting point is. All right. You should start a YouTube channel uh, to teach Android development with Kotlin. I'll definitely consider that, but um, I mean, Honestly speaking, I'm not a YouTuber. I am. Uh, I like. I like live streams. I like live streams and taking up the MLH hacks. You know, Twitch stream. I like that, and I love you all. But a YouTube channel. I mean, hats off to those who you know start a YouTube channel and get them like be active on that creating content. Uh, I am not sure if I'm that person. All right, so. Your Android Studio is installed. Let me quickly share my screen and share my Android Studio as well with you all. Okay. And then I want to explain what you will do once it starts. Okay. Can you see my screen, everyone? just pull this up right here let me know if my screen is visible to you all i'm trying to fix it on my uh you know uh, talk in such a way that i can see your comments but uh, it's not that easy but cool. if my screen is visible and text is readable i'm going to continue from here all right waiting for exactly one minute you have one minute to check in get set up and just sat, sit right there because we're going to start coding in this application. I'm going to explain to you how we started. And somebody did ask for a dark theme. Nope, sorry, you are not getting that dark theme. I like the light theme one for Android. I mean, I tried the dark theme. Not a very big fan. But if you want, you can definitely get that dark theme for your uh, laptop. All right. <laughs> sorry about that. This is one request I'm not going to fulfill here. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, all right. So now that everything is set up, let me just quickly pull that up and explain to you from the beginning what is it that we're trying to do here. All right. So as you were saying that there uh, is an other application. Now, uh, if you have questions in between, please, please put them in the comment section. Uh, I don't have the comment section live right now while I'm on the Android Studio, but I'll just go back and forth between two so that, you know, I can help you navigate through that. Uh, and I am on the screen right now. Which template we should use was a question. So what we're going to do here is uh, you go to file. I'm not sure if you can see the screen, but all right. Uh, right. So you go to file. The studio would like take a lot of RAM. So because I'm streaming and I'm working here, it might take some time for it to load up. But that's all right. We'll work through it. And you click on new project. All right. And this is one step that I've already done. That is why you see a blank screen. But I'm going to explain it to you so that uh, you can work your way through it, right? So I'm not going to create a new project, but I'm going to just going to show you how you can create a new project. So you click on a new project. You see a project template. I'm not sure if your screen is visible. It is great, incredible, incredible. You can go back there, right? So there should be an empty activity. You click on the empty activity and you click on next. Empty activity is just an entire like an activity per se. Let me explain what an activity is. Your screen on a uh, like in basic in basic layman terms, if I would say that. Uh, your screen on an, on your first page that you start is the main activity, is the place where you know all of your and application features and you know whatever you want to put it, write that into it, it is right there. So an activity is that main context page that you've created, and uh, you choose an empty activity for this project template, and you click on next. Now here you write the name of the application, like for example you can write health app, 
I've already created, so I'll not just click on finish, but I'll do the other steps. Uh, you create the health app. It's gonna you can choose a location to save in. You can choose your favorite Kotlin, uh, Java, language, Java or Kotlin. I'm going to do this in Kotlin, but you can do it in Java if you want to. And you can use a minimum SDK. Right now, it's set on 16 by default. You can use any one of your choice. Whatever you choose, you can actually see the number of devices that's going to run at. So uh, I'm going to put that on the basic one. 98.8% of the devices, uh, this app would be able to run on 99.8% of the devices. But you can make your take your pick and choose whatever app you want. And then once you click on finish, it's going to create a page like this. All right, this is where it's going to land you up. Since I've created a Kotlin project, this is a Kotlin file. But if you create a Java project, this would be a Java file with Java code written into it. Sounds good, everyone? Everyone, it's, uh, I mean, up until here, do you have any doubts, any confusion, anything else? Let me come back to the screen and check. How do we create an? This is how you create an Android application. I think I explained most of those steps. That zero point two percent who left our eyes just problem. <laughs> I mean, true words. <laughs> no doubts. Go ahead. Amazing. Incredible. Okay, wait only for five minutes. Yep, clear. I'm gonna wait for two. You know, I'm gonna meet you in um, the middle here so that everyone is on stage. Everyone else is clear. I'm gonna wait for a minute, uh, probably, so that you all are set up, and then we're gonna walk through. Okay. Yeah, if you neither know Java nor Kotlin, that's absolutely fine. Just follow along with me. I'll explain the Kotlin syntax, and this is how you can learn. But I would definitely recommend you should learn a one particular programming language. If it's Java, if it's not Java, it might be anything else. But try learning one. It's so heating. I mean, we've not even started yet. <laughs> All right, let's start here. I'm going to explain, yes, empty structure. Kotlin is somewhat similar, but uh, there are a lot of other features and a bit of, like benefits of using Kotlin, and that is why I do use that. All right, so let me explain the product structure while we are at it. So this is what your application should look like right now, right? Now, let's start with the project structure first to understand what we're going to do in this application and what files we're going to change and update, right? So. Let's see, um, we have an application here. This is a project structure. This is the directory, first directory that you see. That's your app, the first one. In that, you can see a couple of folder. For example, you see, you see Manifest, which has an Android manifest, which includes details about your Android application, uh, basically your activities. It contains details of, about that. Then there is a Java folder where you can see a main activity Kotlin file. Let me show you that. Right. So this is a Java folder where you see the main activity Kotlin file. And this could contain a couple bunch of things which you might not understand right now. But I'm going to explain that to you in just a minute. Uh, this is a Kotlin find right here. And you can also see that there is a resource folder. This folder is basically for your assets, for your vector assets if you want to add images, um, you know, any other videos or any other things that you want to add, values, maps, any other drawables that you want to add, anything like that. Your entire layouts, your app layouts, and how your app looks, basically your app UI is contained in the layout folder. And when you open the layout folder, you can see the activity main file. Now, you see this activity main file right here. It's going to render the preview in just a minute. But you can see that you, we have a Hello World application right here. In this Hello World application, uh, so you can see that the first text is already there. And you need to make changes to your UI in order to create that. So I'm going to just zoom it out a bit so that you can see it all. But this is what your app screen looks like. And this is a hello world right here in the middle of it. If you see, now this was where I was in the design folder where I can make changes to it. But there's also a code folder. And in this code folder, you can see that the hello world application is already created. Uh, there's a simple text view. I'm going to explain a couple of these terms in just a minute. But just let's complete first the project structure. Next. There is also a Gradle scripts where you can see the build Gradle files. This is for your like to add libraries or anything else, or plugins for your app and your for your basically your whole app bundle or just the application you're working on. And this is what your Gradle scripts entail. We will not be working or touching Gradle scripts for now. You can obviously do that, but uh, make changes to it. But for now, we just work on two main files. First is the activity main, and the other one is the Kotlin file. So let me just come back to the screen and check if you have any questions about the project structure. Gradle build. Gradle build. Let the Gradle build keep running. I mean, we're going to work through it all. If the Gradle build is running, let it do its job. Don't worry about it. Empty activity. That is correct. 
uh, I think I answered most of the questions. I'm sorry if I missed anything. How do you see the render and the design? Uh, in the top right tab, I'm going to show that to you. Give me a second. So in the top tab, when you can see this activity main file, there is code split and design. Once you click on design, you can see the design here, or you can see a layout validation right here when you click on this button. Cool. All right, all right, all right. Let's see. If you missed the last 20 seconds, I did nothing but explain the product structure. And it's very really easy and pretty simple. You can go through it. If you have any questions, ask that. The template that we used is an empty template. I definitely learned Java before Kotlin, but it's not a hard and fast rule. You can learn one without the other. But it's beneficial if you want the other. All right. Let's talk about your Hello World application. If it's taking time to install, just like look at the demo for a minute. Let it do its job in the background. You look at the demo because right now I'm explaining how we're going to write this code, how what, what does it all mean. And once we're writing that code, then your application would be ready, and then you can work on that. Sounds good, everyone? All right. <coughs> there should be a percentage for the minimum SDK. I think it's 16. Let me check. Minimum, yeah, it's API 16, Android 4.1, Jelly Bean. You can use this one. You can use any other one. doesn't matter. We're just testing out the application, so it's absolutely fine, whatever it is to use. You can use the default 16 minimum SDK. All right, so coming back up. Now, I'm going to show you some of these changes in real time so that you understand how these things work. Uh, this is the activity main file, as I just mentioned, right? In this particular file, what you all can see is that there is a main activity folder, and there's a layout on the right side of the screen. Yes, a uh, little brief of what I'm building. I'm building a step counter. Uh, you know, like this is the health app that we're going to create today. We're going to create a step counter, and I'm explaining Android application here. All right. So I'm going to go back to my screen on, and not be able to see your comments for a minute. But if there are any questions, please leave them, and I'll like go back and forth my screen. All right. So I'm was talking about the Android uh, activity main. File. Now, in this file, what you can see here is at the top, you can see that it's a constraint layout. I'll explain what the constraint layout is. But basically, just to give you a brief idea, a layout that we use for your entire application to understand what the what thing, like whatever element you would want to add your application, where should it go? For example, you want to add text. You want to take input from the user. You want to add a button. Anything that you want to add, the layout sets the positioning of all of these elements. The design, absolutely, yes. Any other questions? questions? How do you bring the layout to the right if you can? To the right? Uh, I'm not sure. What are you trying to do? Ah, you want me to shift that layout? I'm going. Oh, they want to see the design. Yeah, it's the design button on the right on top. You can see that. All right. So, what I was saying, absolutely. Uh, yeah, there are a couple of things that are happening here. There's a text view and there's a constraint down. The text view is basically the text that you see in the between. So I'm just going to zoom in here a bit so that you can see it. But can you see uh, the Hello World in center right here? This one. This is a Hello World uh, application, as mentioned. And this is what your app would look like, just a Hello World. If you load it right now, you can just see the Hello World in between. All right. And if you just go ahead and come here, if I'm going to change something, let's say I'm just going to remove this one and write hello. So I can see in real time that the text changes on the right side uh, of the screen. The layout manager is the button that you can click if you want to see this design. Uh, you can't see the code in activity made. Uh, can you like invalidate your cache and restart your Android Studio? Because if you created a new and empty activity, this is something which is the basics. Uh, if not, you can obviously type down this code. I mean, it's not that difficult, but uh, if you want, you can try that. So this is the button from the top right, which is layout input validation. And this is in the activity main file. You can see that. Good morning, Adam. How are you doing today? We were just talking just a minute back about you. We gave you a shout out. <laughs> 
All right, all right. So uh, you can see that there is there are a lot of changes. So we were working on a text tree. Now what we need is I'm not going to work on a very beautiful design here. I'm just going to create two things that I need. First thing that I need is steps, and then I want to display a number of steps that I have. So in order to do that, I'm just going to add steps here instead of hello. All right. So as you can see, you can see that in the middle of the screen, you can see steps written. Oh, it's blocking the view. All right, I'm going to remove that prompt. Good, looks good now, looks good. Great, amazing. All right, back up on screen. Let's pick up some pace now. All right, so now that you have a clear in like idea, uh, uh, I mean, I would take that as a comp compliment, definitely. Wish you could replace me with my college teachers. <laughs> I mean, lovely. All right, so concentrate, friends, concentrate. We have a lot of work to do, and right now we'll just finish up with the explaining of the thing so that everyone is up, or up to speed on what we're doing. Constraint layout, just a quick intro to that. You can read more up on about it, but the reason that we're using constraint layout is because constraint layout gives us access to, you know, add elements on top of each other, on bottom of each other. Basically, we have our main elements and other elements surrounded by it. So we can we can do that using constraint layout, and that is why it's a great tool to use. You can use other layouts as well. You can find out about those layouts and pick up with one for your favorite application. All right? OK, so cool, cool, cool. Uh, all right, we were talking about the text view. Now you can see that there is a text in between. Let's start with increasing, like changing the UI a bit so that it's much more not beautiful, but something which is a little more feasible for us to you know, see the changes and everything. So let's first uh, introduce the text side. Now, the best thing, as I mentioned, about Android Studio is the autocomplete feature. I absolutely love it. I don't have to do anything else. I just type out what I want, and I can see a method or an attribute for it. So if you type in text size, we can see that there is an attribute of alignment, all caps, appearance, color, color highlight, app, and every other thing. So you want the text size, you get the text size. Absolutely right. I'm back on screen. The code link. Yes, of course. I'll share the code on my GitHub repository and share the link in Discord later. All right. Now just concentrate here, friends. Don't worry about the code link. Just concentrate here. We're just starting out, and you get every all, all the other resources that you need. But for now, concentrate here, everyone. Let's focus. So text size. We need a, a text size here. So I'll just for once try out something and say, let's say I need a 50 SP of text size. SP, DB, all of these are different attributes that you can see, um, you know, different ways you can, uh, different metrics basically for your uh, size. And you can find out more about them online, but this is just us adding, a, you know, a size there to just make that a little bit bold. Yes, I'll share the GitHub repo of this app. Don't worry about it. Absolutely fine. I mean, concentrate here, friends. I'm telling you to concentrate here. What are you doing? What are you doing? All right, so you get the code later, but don't worry about it. Uh, let's understand the code base right here. Now, what I did here was just increase the text size to 50 SP. SP is another one of these metrics that you can use. There's SP, there's DP, there's other metrics. There's something that you learn in your computer graphics. Teacher is scolding us. I never scold anyone. Don't talk to me like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> OK, all right. I'm going to come back here. I'm just, just going to ignore that. I'm just going to ignore that. <laughs> OK, all right. So yes, OK, that's all right, Rakanus. I mean, I don't mind you trolling me as long as you support me uh, outside of the stream, everywhere else, and you say that I'm your favorite coach. That's completely fine. Just kidding. <laughs> all right, so this is something that we did. Now we're going to add a couple of margins here to, you know, and make sure that our uh, text is surrounded. And uh, you can also see that th there are some of the attributes that are already present. So these attributes are really important, which are already there, as you can see. So as you can see, that there is a layout width and a layout height. The layout width and layout height is self-explanatory. It's basically your text view's width and height, right? So your text view has a width and a height. You can add that. You can fix this by adding, let's say, a 50 SP thing here as well. I mean, you can do that. Definitely, you can do that. But that is something that we're not doing. I'll tell you why. We're using wrap content here. Wrap content basically gives your element as much space as it is required here for a wrap content. 
And as you can see that in the above section, it's a match parent thing. Match parent is it matches the height and the width of the parent class, whatever parent is. Constraint layout covers the entire segment, so it has the uh, width and height of the entire layout. While text view contains wrap content, which is just wrapping the space around the content that you want. For example, if I write steps tracker, it's going to take the entire steps tracker and it's going to give uh, a lot uh, your text view the entire space for the steps tracker. Right now, let's keep it at steps, but this is something that I wanted to point out. Coming back on the screen for doubts, doubts, doubts. Okay, let's see. Right. So DP and SP is basically a uh, density or scale pixels that you use. And yeah, it, it is like that. Do we like that? So it's just a virtual unit that you can use to you know identify um, what you want your size to be. <laughs> okay, all right. Coming back up. Now let's concentrate on the next section that I'm gonna show you. So I was talking about some of the margins that I wanted to add. So let's see what kind of margins we have here. Let's introduce a chalk margin first. I mean, I think the top one would be enough because we only need, uh, we all, we've already aligned it to the center. We just need a top margin. Let's put an 18 DP here. I'm just going to show you a couple of differences here. So for margin, I'm using DP. It's just an idea of size that I have in my mind. You can use SP DP according to your own choice. Right? So, uh, yeah, as I was saying, a couple of things here, a couple of things there. I mean, this looks like, it. I mean, you can see, right, that this looks really nice in, in center in between. I'm not creating a very beautiful UI. I am not a designer here. I'm just going to create a simple structure here and let us get started. The second thing that we want uh, is that another text view that can show us the number of steps that we have. Right now, this is the title steps. We also need another text view for the numbers. So just going to copy this one. And then I'm going to use that to arrange both of my attributes. Right. So, OK, all right. Before I do that, a thing that I missed that was absolutely, absolutely necessary and something that you should be aware of, any element that you create here, any element in you, that you create in an activity main XML file, that should have an ID. So let's see. What is an ID? This is an Android ID that you should have. And this ID, uh, you can give this I any value or any name to this uh, text view. This ID would help you connect your activity main file to the main activity Kotlin file. This ID is like the identifier that you're going to use to get access to this text view, create into a button, add some code there, get some functionality in place using the Kotlin file. So it's basically somewhat similar. Uh, I've used this example sometimes. It's not exactly the same, but somewhat similar to when you use HTML, CSS to you know, create, if you're a web developer, create the front end, and then use JavaScript to write the controllers and everything. So this is something like that. But here we use identifiers to, to make sure that we have first one, like we have an ID here, and then we have the main activity button file here. Questions? Getting a box on this the margin is margin is not in the box. Margin is just something you just distance how much from top left bottom you want. Uh, I think that already answered by Ansh. Uh, where can you find activity main XML? That's in the resource folder and the layout folder. There should be an RES folder in your app. It includes a layout folder and there it should be. Okay, coming back, coming back up here. All right. So we were talking about this. Now we're going to create an ID. Let's call this steps label. This is just an ID that I'm giving uh, this entire step segment so that I have, uh, you know, an idea on, you know, what this particular element was called. ID once again, of course I will. So ID is basically an identifier that you introduce to an element. Your element is your text view, steps, right? That is your element. Steps, uh, the ID is an identifier for that text view. A unique thing to that element, yes, as I mentioned. And that is basically something which you can use in your Kotlin file or in your Java file to write controls or any other functionality that you want. For example, you want to con like want to make this text view clickable and you want to introduce an on-click feature to it that someone clicks, it should take them to another activity. And once you want to do that, you need an ID to identify that in the Kotlin file. Cool? All right. Wonderful. Coming back on screen, let's talk about some of the other things that we have here. OK, so this is something that we've already done. But right, let's work on this text view. Now, this is the text view that we want to introduce. Like, we, we don't want 
uh, basically to call it steps, we have we should have a zero right here. And the reason that we want a zero is basically we want to introduce a number of steps to this one. Okay. Cool. All right. The questions are being answered and already done. Thank you so much for helping me out here, Anj. All right. Let's come back and talk about the activity main file. Okay, all right, all right. Let's talk about this here. So as you can see that this is a text that we already created. Some of these things I've already explained. You know what a wrap content is. You know what a wrap content is and a layout, height and layout width is. You know what a text size is. Let's reduce this text size because we don't want this to be that huge. Let's get it to 35 probably. I think that should work. Yeah, but then as you can see that there is quite an overlap here on the steps and the zero, right? And we want a constraint to be below uh, steps. Is that correct? Everyone following along? Yes. Why is zero on top of step? Because we're going to introduce uh, a change to that and we're going to make some changes to it. So as you can see that there are some of the constraints that are already present here. There's bottom to bottom off. There is left to left off, right to right off, top to top. Off. This is fine. We can also see that they are here. Now, these constraints help you to, you know, uh, introduce that. If you want something to the bottom of, something to the left of, right of, you can just, you want, you want, you can decide what you want to be, what you want to be on the left of something, what you want to be on the right of something, and add that constraint to it. So, how to do that? Let's make a couple of changes. I'm going to introduce uh, something called top to the bottom of because I want the steps to be on top to the bottom of the other and introduce this to the bottom. So, let's just add this right here. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a changes. Make changes straight away here. But you can like add a different thing you want. And talk to the bottom of instead of parent. I'm gonna use that ID, the identifier that we introduced in the previous segment. If you see that, that was add ID and then steps table. So talk to the bottom of would do it in the steps ID label. And there are a couple of other things that we missed, which is. You're introducing the left to the right of parent and stuff like that. That is the reason that you can't see it on screen right now because it's right now the left of the parent and the right of the parent. So we're going to introduce a couple of other things, which would be we're going to remove all of this. And then we're going to see if we have a constraint. Uh, we can see the zero right here. Now we want to put that in the middle. So let's add a start to the start off. That's an end off. And this one would be again parent because we want it to be at the start of parent, and then we want another one from end to the end of. This is just to complete the entire layout. We can play around with these layouts to see what changes it makes. But end to the end, I'm just going to introduce another parent here. Let's see what happens when we do this. Now, as you can see, Uh, so what about the ID for the counter? Absolutely great question. We have to introduce the ID for the counter, and that is the best part about it. So we're going to introduce the ID right here. Let's add an ID, and then add an ID steps. All right, so we have an ID in place. Everything's good. Everything's great. Uh, now, this is all set up, but as you can see, it's just a little in the middle. Now, I'm not going to use my text view and code to uh, you know, make changes to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into design, and I'm just going to pull everything right up to the center so that it is where we exactly where we need it. Now, as you can see, zooming out, you can see where it, the steps in zero lies. And as you can see, a code is already introduced in this system. So you can see a horizontal bias and a vertical bias is already introduced, which you can see. And this is how you know the you the so you can create a UI, you can add color to it, you can add. Let me come back here. All right, slow down a bit. Uh, okay, I will slow down. All right, I'm just gonna wait for a minute here, and so that you can wrap your head around it. And if you want me to repeat something, just let me know. I'm gonna cover that once again. But we were talking about uh, this, the design here. So we, uh, what I did was introduce some of the constraints, introduce some of the uh, text size, and then what I did was just I, like I wanted to show you how you can write code to make those changes, and also how you can use the design feature of it. So you can just drag and drop all of the elements, and I will introduce the code in the XML file on itself. 
Okay, uh, second text view, of course. One second. There you go. Yep. Just did, just did. Let me know if not visible. Do you want me to, like, that's the end of the file. Is this it? Okay, so the steps, how did that end up on zero? I introduced a margin, talked to it, and then uh, after introducing that margin, that margin was just so that my steps don't, like, not touching each other even, there's a margin in place. And then I introduced a talk to the bottom of start to the end of features. Talk to the bottom of basically tells that it should be, um, it's his, the constraint top should be touching the bottom of the steps. And that is how the steps went up on zero. All right, what's the value of the Amazon bias? I think that would be, um, let me check. I mean, I, I did not put the value in myself. I just dragged and dropped uh, my steps to the place where I wanted it and introduced an horizontal or vertical bias on its own. A constrained vertical and horizontal bias is basically um, whenever you want, like, so this is something that the Android application will introduce on itself when I dragged and drop it to the stop and uh, drag and drop it to the center of it. And the reason that I introduced that bias is because uh, my steps was center aligned. First, the gravity was centered. Now I introduced a horizontal bias and made it to like a little on top on, on the feet. So then the entire segment is in between and not just that. I mean, it's not necessary that you need to add that. This is just some of the things that you're working on in order to just keep it in the middle, but it's not absolutely not necessary. Okay, okay. Yes, I can absolutely show how I dragged and dropped it. So I went on the design segment of it. And then I just clicked on this one and dragged it up. Cool, cool, cool. Sounds good. That's the easiest part that I could have done. So basically, the reason that we have like two different things that I wanted to show you was in the first one, in the code part of it, I, I wanted to show you how you can make changes by typing in code and using the autocorrect functionality to introduce that everything. And for the drag and drop feature, I wanted to show you how you can move things around if you just want to make some minor changes, like putting everything in the middle. And that is the beauty of constraint. Yeah. Joe is here. Hi, Joe. What's up? How are you doing? And then Adam just sheds in some love from the for the hearts. So just a little break here that we're taking to introduce everyone to the lovely community. So the Hodge gang is something I am also a part of, and Adam is a proud member of it and a great community member at it. Yes, of course. Um, what is the most of parent? So the parent ID is basically the parent layout. I'm going to show that to you. Give me a second. Uh, I'm going to show that in the code. Code, code, code. Okay, yeah. So uh, as you can see that this is your constraint layout. This is your entire parent thing. So matching the bottom of the parent class is the entire parent layout that you all can see. What we're making? Uh, good question. What are we making today? Friends, do you want to help Joe out here and explain what we're making today? I think they're a little busy understanding the code base. I'm trying to help them out. But today we are creating a health app, a step counter, which I think we all need. Uh, to, we all need something in this lockdown. Uh, we have absolutely no regard for our fitness. And this is something that we're trying to motivate ourselves into building and finally using the step tracker. 
So as you can see, the comment section is brimming uh, with comments about the step counter that we're creating, and they're super excited about it. All right, incredible, incredible, incredible. Let's see, let's come back here. Now that I've waited for a minute, I'm just going to scroll through the activity one more time, real quick for you all. If you have missed anything, just add that. And then I want to show you the cotton code. The cotton code is the main code, friends. Don't worry about anything else. This is the layout features. This is something you can drag and drop and experiment from your work, like for your own self. But it's basically just layout design, which you can do. Uh, you can like this is something of one of the basic things. This is not a very pretty layout, as you can see. This is just two text views. So you don't have to worry too much about it. Uh, the main feature, the main thing that I wanted to hit, explain here was the ID, right? We wanted to explain the steps ID that I created in order to use that in the Kotlin file. So follow along. All right. So that, like coming back to here. So what we did was we introduced a text size and a te uh, te something that I know for sure that I need is the margin, the text size, and the text. Everything else that in was introduced was just because I dragged and dropped. And for this one, I just introduced a text, a text size, and again, a margin top. That is something that I absolutely add. And what I did was add top to bottom off for the steps label. Every other constraint is something that I did just so that it's on different part of things. So the constraints is something where you just like, it's by practice that you understand that to the left, to the left of which one do you want to use to start? If you want to do the start to the end of, if I was to use the right to the right of here, or just to bottom or bottom of here, for example, if I use, would have used that, I would have to add a right one to it because you can't add just the bottom. You need to add uh, the right to the right of as well. So what I did was add end to the end of just one attribute and just let it be done. It's something that you don't have to like really get into it if you don't want to. There are other layouts that you can use if you find this too difficult, but this is just one way. Incredible. All right, let me come back to the section. Okay, this is your first event, and didn't really seem like it, but uh, welcome to the community, and thank you so much for your kind work. It's really, really, really appreciated. All right, everyone on the same page, let us continue now. Let's talk about the Android application here where we're going to work on the Kotlin file and make some of the page changes. This is already done. So now let me explain what's happening in the Kotlin file, right? So this is your Kotlin file. Now, this is something that you've created uh, and like put in your comment questions in the comment section. I will just, you know, come back to it a little bit later, but I'm going to try and move forward because we have some we have some time left. I want to complete this application before the end of time, uh, before the end of our stream. All right. We have a habit of going overboard, and Brian will not be very, very happy about it if I go overboard today. <laughs> you make it very difficult for me to take this live stream, but hey, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's lovely. All right. Let's talk about the activity file. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm using Kotlin here. You can use Java or anything else. The app compact activity is something of a super class that we're using for the main activity. And the reason that we are using that is to ensure that we have the activity and the context in our class. We need to extend that. We need some of the features of the app compact activity. And that is why we're using that. The other thing that we wanted to introduce here was the sensor event listener. If you remember, friends, if you remember, at the start of the stream, what some of the other folks missed who joined in just now, we explained sensor manager and we saw a more, more about the sensor event listener and how we can implement the sensor event listener, get those methods in place, and introduce everything to it. Right? So that's what we're going to do here. We will introduce a sensor event listener. That's the first step that we're going to do, and then rest will fit everything else into place. Sounds good? All right. Let's start one by one. So we need a sensor event listener. That's now something that you'll see me doing a lot while developing an Android application is just use the alt enter feature or autocomplete feature. Uh, like this is something that I really, really use. Alt enter has literally saved my life so many times while developing an Android application just because it helps me debug, uh, you know, fix errors real quick. So let's talk sensor event listener. As you can see, we already have a sensor event listener in place. I just click on enter. And as you can see, there was an import that was imported. I'm just going to show that to you as well. So you can see that there was a sensor event listener import that was imported already. So anything that you add, any uh, class that you add, it will import uh, the import the it will it will add an import there to actually ensure 
that you can access that class and that is that is automatically added you don't have to worry about it but in case uh, sometimes you're facing an error that might be an issue because you missed out on some of these imports right so just keep a check on that now you can see that there is an error in main activity and that is because we introduced we actually added an interface here and it needs us to implement a couple of uh, you know functions and so that makes any sense. I'm just going to add those functions right here. So if I click on Alt Enter, it's going to tell me to implement those main, main words or either make an ab activity abstract. Abstract is a class where you just have to introduce the members and not write code for it. Uh, like this is an OOPS concept that just introduced you. But yeah, I'm going to use Alt and Enter here and just implement the members. So you can see two events that you already see here: accuracy change and sensor change. Both of these were in the first doc that I just saw, that you just saw. You saw the Android developers docs and you saw the on accuracy change and on sensor change. So just do a control A and then implement both of these functionalities, all right? And the error is gone. Now we're gonna write some code here. We'll not change, as I mentioned, we'll not change on accuracy change. We'll not implement it for now, but you definitely can implement it if you want uh, to introduce this feature in your app as well. I wanna keep it simple, I'll just, add the part where we'll do a sensor change. Let me see if you have any questions, and then I'm going to write some code for it. Uh, so Adam is telling us a very important piece of information that Joe is a part of the Hajj gang. Welcome, Joe. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> All right. Missed the important import part. All right, I'm going to uh, talk about the import part. and. Again, once again, thank you so much, Ansh, for being very active on the chat and helping us out. But I'm gonna like I'm gonna repeat that import part for you. So yes, of course, I'm just repeat that. Anything else that you want me to read? Is it just the import part that you want me to repeat, friends? Okay, all right. Let me talk about that import part real quick again. So whenever you introduced or implement a class or an interface or anything else that you want to, you know, you want your file, want your class to extend or implement. So in this case, it's implementing app compat activity and it's implementing uh, the sensor event lister. Both of these, we need uh, to import that files from somewhere. And in order to do that, we are introducing, uh, you know, a sensor event, a sensor event listener and app compat activity. This is something that was not introduced. If you remove these, you can see that there is an error here that will come because it cannot find sensor in this particular activity. There is no sensor here. We've not introduced a variable. We've not introduced anything else. So what we do is, my friend, Alt and Enter, we just add an import. We fix it by itself. So that is just basically him finding that file and importing it to our uh, activity. Alt and Enter is just a shortcut. It's nothing else of that sort. It's just a shortcut to fix errors. So it says that the import is missing, and we need that import. It's just imported automatically. That's it. That's all about it. It's just importing that file to our file so that we can use it in this folder. And we're using a couple of things here, if you can see. We're using sensor event listener. We're using this. I'm just going to minimize this so that the code is a little clear. But this is something that your code looks like for now. Yeah, usually you don't have to take care of import. Anything that you add, it automatically adds that import. But the reason that I'm pointing that out is for a sometime, like sometimes you face that errors because the wrong import is made and you wanted a different version of it. So just so that you know where to debug and what to debug. All right, wonderful. Moving on, moving on, friends. Let's move on and type some of the code itself. Now, for those of you who are new to, absolutely new and have no idea whatsoever how to develop Android applications, this is for you. But for those of you who know, just revise your concepts. There is an activity site life cycle in place. There are a couple of events, uh, a couple of functions that you have in the app combat, which you can use and implement, right? Two of the most important functions when talking about a sensor event listener is on resume and on pause. What does that mean? So you can also already see an on create here, which means whenever your activity is created or your application is launched, it's the same thing. Application launched, activity created. This is where uh, your first code comes in. You know, they initialize and it will set the content view to the activity main file that we just edited, which had the steps and the counter, remember? That was the activity main file. I'm going to go into this one. You'll see that this is the file that we made changes to over here. Correct? So this is the content view. And then, uh, great, awesome, amazing. So, okay. so this is the content view that we already set. Now, there are a couple of other things that you can add. This was on create. You can also add on pause, which I'm going to add just right about now. 
and you can see that there's already a function there and we also need another function which is on resume so i'm going to add that to on resume and this is on resume itself so the reason that i'm adding these two functions is because i want to make sure that uh, you know whenever my application is resumed or paused there is a change to my um, app now the reason that both of these functions only both of these functions so there are tons and tons of activities in uh, or functions in activity life cycle but um, for this one we want to make sure that we have these two uh, functions absolutely there present why resuming our app we want to uh, we, whenever we are resuming our app we want to make sure that our sensor is active and whenever we are on pause we want to make sure that we uh, we like we're not using the sensor to get that data in order to ensure that our battery is not drained and we are not using the application when it's closed or offline or on pause and the difference between on resume and on pause is this hear me out okay very simple example that i'm going to give it to you so whenever you use your phone like remember when you're switching applications from one applications to other applications these are a couple of functions that are called when you are making those changes to your activity so let's say you opened your step counter now you shifted to another app and watched netflix now you're watching netflix and let's say you're moving from one place to another but you're not uh, opening your step counter app that means it shouldn't listen to your steps right so that is when you pause your application if you shift it on to another application and that on pause function is called so we'll just ask them to stop uh, using our, or registering the event count and if we want on resume that basically means when we come back to our application we want it to resume to normal absolutely you all are chatting behind my back i mean i want to be in on this gossip too what's happening okay okay you're talking about the heart gang i mean come on we can talk about gang we are here focusing on a health app aren't you concerned about your fitness at all lovely friends lovely absolutely lovely i am super proud of you okay all right let's talk about the uh yeah let's talk about a couple of things that we're going to introduce now that you all up i hope that this part is clear i explained on resume i explained on pause i explained both of those functions absolutely clear where can you get this code i'll share it after the stream and share it on discord Yes, I'll provide a GitHub link. Cool, cool. Everyone, excited? Are you excited? Uh, I want to know in the comment section because now we're going to write in some code. It's going to move way fast. You have every information that you possibly need to develop this application. Now I'm going to put all of that information to use, and magically, right now, you'll see everything will connect and piece itself together. Sounds good? All right. I am super excited as well because I have. I am sure that every of the, all of these concepts are clear, and you have all the tools that you need. So now we're just going to write it down and create this application. So first off, we need two variables, right? Two variables, and I explain why we need those two variables. First, we need to ensure that our app is running or not. In order to ensure our app is running, what we can do is we'll just introduce a boolean variable, so that uh, if it's running, it's set to false. If it's if it's running, it's set to true. If it's not running, it's set to false. So let's create that first. Let's create a running variable and call like initialize it to false. Now this is how you create a variable in Kotlin. Very simple. You introduce a var, you introduce a running variable, like name the variable, and you initialize it. The other thing that we need here, and if you remember the docs that I showed you in the beginning, you can refer to them as well. The other thing that we needed was a sensor manager. Now we need that sensor manager. We want to access it to different. Functions and not what don't we don't want it to be bounded by context or we don't want it to be bounded by a function. So we're gonna initialize. We're gonna make that global variable here, but we're gonna initialize it later. So we need a var, a sensor manager, and uh, we're gonna initialize it to null. Now, as you can see, this var sensor manager is showing us an error, and the reason that it's doing that it's it's saying that it needs to be uh you know it's it's actually showing not showing an error but it's showing a warning and the warning basically means that it needs us to ensure that we uh you know introduce a type and how do you introduce a type in kotlin you use the colon and you add the type there 
So we need a sensor manager here. So I'm just going to add that. And you can see we can already get that sensor manager in place. I'm going to add that. And then I'm going to add a question mark. So what does this question mark mean and why did I add it? If I just remove the question mark for a bit. Right now, it's the sensor manager type that I introduced. But it's saying that I introduced it to null and it's showing me an error. Let's see what the error says. Null cannot be a value of a non-null type in sensor manager. That means if there is a value here, this cannot be the type for a sensor manager. And that is the reason that I wanted to use a question mark, which basically means that if it is not null, then it then if it is basically null, then just don't go forward with it. Uh, and you can initialize it uh, you know, in an easier way. I think uh, explaining the reason for a question mark would be much, much more easier when I try to explain a couple of other steps to you in, like in Kotlin. But here, just to give you a brief idea, if you don't understand the meaning of a question mark here in Kotlin, don't worry. It'll come up again, and that at that point of time, I'll be able to explain you in a much better way. Yes, somebody also mentioned a question mark should be there. So absolutely. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Cool. So this is how we created it, and we started it. And now we will work on a couple of other things. Now that we are created, we have created this. The reason I initialize is to null because I don't want it already initialized. I won't want the sensor manager to be already initialized before I create my activity. And once I create my activity, that is when I want to initialize our sensor manager. Right. In order to do that, we want our sensor manager to get the system service of sensors. And then we only use that. Right. So what we're going to do here is we get our sensor manager. Right? This is the variable I just created. I'm just using that variable and initializing it on, on create. This is just a good practice. I created a global variable, but I'm not global variable, but I'm not initializing it globally. I'm in, in, uh, introducing it or initializing it locally on, on the create function. Okay, sensor manager. I'm gonna get the system service first. And the reason that I have like I have an idea about these kind of uh, you know functions or modules that are already present, but you can obviously search around and find. But I'm going to tell you, we're using a system service, right? Your phone is a system. You're using a service of sensors that is already introduced there. And I'm going to get that in place. If you want more context on this, it's again in the docs that we mentioned at the, first, at the beginning of this workshop. I showed you the Google Docs about how to create a sensor or how to use a sensor manager. And it's there. It introduces a system service. You remember they used accelerometer? Right now here, we're going to do something similar to that. But we just, we're not going to use accelerometer here. We're going to use step counter. Cool. Now, system service. For this one, we need the, uh, as you can see, it is asking for, what's it asking for? Okay. Second. I want to show you something. Uh, that is the reason. Yeah, it's asking for a name and string, right? It's asking for a service class or a sensor manager in place. So we're going to use the second one, which is the service class and sensor manager function, because we need to introduce a sensor service. Now, the app contact uh, compact activity, you remember I talked about the context. We, uh, we talked about how this app is an entire context, and that includes most of our features, services, and anything. Now, if we need the sensor service, this is how we introduce it. And watch it like, carefully. First, we introduce the context, which is already the context of the application that we have. And next, we introduce a couple of services. We get access to the services this way. We have the context of our application now, and through that, we want access to a bunch of other services. We have the sensor service, accessibility service, account service, activity, alarm, and a bunch of other biometric, Bluetooth, camera, whatever it is that you want to use for your application, there is a service in place for it. And like there is huge list, as you can see, right? Oops. I think I just restarted the list, but no worries, I'll just go back up. So we need the sensor service and we have that in place. All good, all good. Let me come back and see if everything is good in the comment section. But then we initialize to null globally. Yeah, we did initialize to null, and the reason we did that, that was if I just don't initialize it at all, it shows an error because you need to give it a starting value if you want to like uh, use it later. It will show an error because of that. And Okay, got it, got it, got it. We have this. Now, as you can see, it's still showing us an error. 
clearly this is not the correct way to do it and the reason that it's showing you an error is very simple now listen carefully friends the get system service has a lot of services right absolutely which means that th this particular function would not return a sensor service we are giving it a context of a sensor service but this system is returning a service a manager a simple manager to work with us yes we can use alt enter again as well but for now i want to explain something so i'm not going to use alt enter but okay so this what this needs is type casting it needs us to type cast that service that we get into the sensor manager and introduce it to that so we've already introduced the type sensor manager and we have our service here so we'll just use an as that is an alias for um, using it uh, for typecasting and now we're going to introduce that as sensor manager and there you go error is gone absolutely that simple that easy i hope the statement is absolutely clear this was the sensor manager bit that you just explained and now i'm going to explain to you the on resume part of it but i just want to make sure that we are good so that and now uh, i will go in a very fast pace because a we short on time uh, we just have a uh, like uh, half an hour or so but that's probably more than enough because more the major part of the major chunk of the program i've already explained everything to you all i needed is just put it down into code and you'll understand the uh, extent of it cool no more questions coming back up right here and once again thank you so much anj and i think raj also helped out for keeping a uh, you know uh, keeping a check on the comment section really appreciate your help with that okay all right so on resume what is happening in on resume like give it a thought you resume your application on resume is called whenever you start your application or whenever you come back to your application after being on a different app for some time so on resume what it does is it has two different things that we need to we need to make sure now it's first off it's on resume which means your application is functioning which means what you can do is you can set your running variable to true and you'll see why this running variable is important in just a minute but for now i just want to explain to you what's happening running should be set to true because your application is working you you are there on your activity first and the second thing that we want is we need to get access to that step, step sensor and we need to uh, ensure that our manager is listening to that so here we introduce another variable which is a step center variable now the reason right now we just told them that we need to use the sensor service we did not uh, we did not share or we did not talk about uh, how we can use a sensor uh, you know an, a step counter or anything else like that so this is something that we are trying to achieve here and this is something that we are we want to go forward with so we want a variable which is a set center variable and then we will just call that one out so this is another variable that we introduced and there you go right so another variable that we introduced but right now we want to make sure that this sensor manager like we get the default type uh, step counter in place right we want the step counter type and we want to introduce that so we have a step sensor just give me a second some water and then we're going to do right here. Sorry for that. We need to stay hydrated in order to complete this code. All right. Uh, if you have any questions, meanwhile, just put them right in and I'm going to answer that in just a minute. But for now, let's talk about the step sensor. I want to complete this function first and then I'm going to move forward to uh, the on pause bit. But for now, let's talk about the resume. So we have our step sensors in place. Now we want our sensor manager to get us access, uh, we want our, all right, let's see, yeah, we want our steps, uh, sensor manager to get access to the sensor manager uh, service of getting a step counter, right? So we, get, we want that default, like we want that sensor for us and we want to introduce that in just a minute. Let me see, okay, line number 19. Yeah, sure. I'm going to introduce that again. So the sensor manager. Uh, so, OK, all right. Line number 19, we were talking about the sensor manager. Now we are initializing the sensor manager whenever we're creating our application. Uh, the on create function is called the activity when it's created. The on create function is called in this on create function sensor manager. We want to get the system service and then we want to, uh, you know, type cast it as sensor manager. So we're just asking our system to send us the sensor service, and then we want to type cast it as I, uh, sensor manager in order to initialize it. That's it. That's all about it. I gave a detailed explanation, but this is, this is the brief context of it. 
And now in the step sensor, we want our step sensor manager to give us access to the step sensor for the port to get that data. So we're going to introduce a sensor manager. And we want to get the default sensor, right? Now, the reason, again, we can see, first, let me collect and complete the statement. And then I'm going to explain why question mark was used here. But for now, we want to get the default sensor. And which sensor we need? We need the step counter. So we get access to the sensor folder because that is where, where all the hardware is. And then we just need the step counter. There are tons of others. You saw that they use accelerometer. You saw that they use ambient, uh, ambient temperature. There's human day, gravity, gyroscope, heartbeat, heart rate. Bunch of other things that you can use. For now, we only need step counter. So I'm just going to get that. There you go. Right. So that is why we declared a, a global variable because we want it to access it in multiple functions. We want to access it on resume. We want to access it on create. I could have just created that variable here, but that would not have been a very feasible thing for me to do because then I would have to introduce it through arguments or other ways. So this is just the most easiest way that we can achieve that. Now we have we that we have a step sensor in place. I'm just gonna talk about why we use a question mark here. Let's say we just remove that question mark. Now it's showing you an error, but the part about here is the part about Kotlin is that it saves your app from crash, crashing or any other issues that you might run into. Sensor manager might be null. There is a high chance that your phone does not have a sensor that we require. And if, my, if the, we don't get a sensor manager, we, you know, we need to introduce null safety. And in order to do that, we need to introduce a question mark. This question mark just basically tells that whether if sensor manager is not available or if it's null, you don't move on to this. you don't move on with the statement and you don't access that particular get default sensor method on a null and to avoid null pointer exception sounds good everyone if you need if you have questions please let me know but this is it now let's say you don't get so there is a chance that you get a step sensor let us see that there is a chance that you get the step sensor and there is a chance that you do not get the step sensor right it might be null there's a chance that it's null. There's a chance that you might get the step sensor, right? If it's null, which means that here you can let uh, the other folks know, or your basically your whoever's using your app, you let them know somehow that you, you don't have a step sensor, and that is the reason we are doing that. You can do this multi in multiple ways. You can introduce them to another activity. You can ask them to you know make it another device. For now, just to make things easier. I'm going to add a toast here. A toast is just basically whenever you see something, you do something on an app, and there's a pop-up at the bottom of the screen, just a small pop-up, which like fades away after a while back. That is what support a toast is for. You can try it out and then see how it looks on an application. But I'm going to use that here. So I'm going to use a toast, which is another widget. It just tells, uh, you know, it just, it's, it's just a way for you to tell the user what's happening. So I'm just going to make a toast here. So I'm going to make that text. Now, the first thing it needs is a context. As I mentioned before, we are using app compact activity and we also import in context. We already have that context with us. So we just need to access our super class in order to get that context. So we just can use the keyword this. For those of you who don't know what super class is, it's just basically we implemented an app compact activity class and it has a method there, it has context in it, and we need to access that context. So we just get uh, this variable to access that super class and get that context in place. Context is the basically. Um, your entire activity context or activity is the main file that you see whenever you open your application. Good, sounds good. All right, now there are a bunch of other things that they need. They need a character sequence, which means we're going to tell them that we're going to introduce a text here and we're going to tell them that you don't have a step counter sensor, my friend. No step counter sensor. You don't have that. And the third thing that they want is the duration. Now, this duration can be. Uh, a short length, or you can add time here, you're going to use and anything like that. But I'm going to use the default length that they have. So if you go for toast and you just do a dot, you can see that they have two default lengths already present a short length and a long length. I'm just going to use a short length here, but you can use any one you like. And this is how you complete the toast. Finally, in order because your toast is now created, you just made a text, you're not showing it right now. You have to call the show function in order to show that toast. And this is how you complete a toast. And uh, this is how you can, you know, get that thing in one. So it's very simple, as you can see. I was just, what I was doing is whatever it's asking me uh, that this is the information I need, I am giving it that information and I'm creating my uh, toast. It's very simple, it's very easy. You can step by step achieve that. Now let's talk about the else part of it. Now, what if we have that step sensor? Now this is where we do the actual work. 
And then one line, I'm just going to cover the entire bit summary of it. And then after that, it's a piece of cake. After that, you just understand everything. You can write the on pause. You can write the sensor activity change. Anything that is changed, you can do that on your own after this. But I'm going to, don't worry, I'm going to walk you through all of that. Don't worry about it at all. So we were talking about the sensor manager, right? Now we want to register the listener. What does it mean? We want them to listen to whatever changes we have made in that step counter. All right, coming back for questions. I'll say, uh, okay, okay, no questions. But this is, okay, shout out to Vishal. First event, and he's probably participating and loving it. Thank you so much for joining in, Vishal. Uh, love to see you here. All right, I'm coming back up on screen and let's talk about your on resume function. Now that you have this in place, we need to register our listener. We need to check, like listen for changes. And in order to do that, we call our sensor manager back again. Our sensor manager is our buddy here. He'll, he'll help you out with anything that you need. And for now, we need to register our listener, right? We need to register our listener. We need to ensure that our sensor manager is working and listening to all the changes as soon as we get access to a step sensor. And it's the application is running. We know that the application is running. We have our step sensors place in place. We just need to register listener. Now it's still showing us an error. Why it is doing that? Because it needs a couple of arguments. Let's see what those arguments are. All right, let's see what the arguments are. So we have a couple of arguments here. We're going to use the third one, which is the sensor event listener. Then it needs a sensor, and it then it needs a sampling period. Which are, uh, I'll explain what all these things mean. First off, let's talk about the listener. As you can see, as you remember, we use app compat activity. We also use sensor event listener. So again, it's a super class. We just need to call that super class here. All right, done. Listener is there. You don't need to create an object. It's a super class. You just need to call that interface. That's good. First part clear. Now it requires a sensor. This is something that we've already created here. I created this default sensor before, but the better way to have explained this would be because I knew I, I needed that sensor. I created it. But once you need that sensor here, you can create a variable step sensor as a sensor manager for a type step counter and then get that thing in here. So it's just me rings ahead of steps. But this is where you actually require or need that step sensor. And there's one more thing that they need. This is not all. They need a sampling period, which means how often do you want your sensor manager to listen to changes? This is what they're asking. For that, we are lucky that the sensor manager already has some default or some generic terms that we have. There's delay UI, there's delay fastest game normal. Delay UI means however time it takes for you to you know uh, to get a delay in the UI. You can find more about these all of these in uh, the doc itself. I showed you that there was an access minus, a sensor delay fast game normal. All of these variables were there in that doc itself. So I'm just going to use this one because it's simple. It's easy. You just need to delay. Uh, whenever there's a delay in the UI, you listen to it and then just update that UI. This is what we want to be done. And right now, there is just one more error in this entire statement. Can anybody let me know? Uh, anybody can just mention that in the comment section. What is that one error in this statement that we should fix? You should know that by now. I mean, I've explained that multiple times in the stream, and I'm sure that you got it. Question mark. Absolutely. Yes. We want to introduce the null safety and we want to introduce that question mark bit to it. I'm glad that everyone is listening and is on up, up to speed with everything. So I'm just going to introduce that here. And voila, your statement is complete. And this is where we complete our on resume function. Wasn't that simple and easy? I mean, I tried my best to be as thorough and as, uh, like, as beginner friendly, like make it as beginner friendly as possible. Let me know if you have any questions, and I hope you understand the entire crux of it. It's very simple, easy. It's just like, I mean, I absolutely love it. It's so seamless. You just have to like put it, things into it, and it's so seamless. I absolutely love it. And I'm glad to see that you all understand the value of that question mark right there. <laughs> OK, all right. Moving on, let's talk about the on pause function. Maybe. Let's write the on pause function. It's very simple. Now, I'm not going to write the on pause function for you. You want to tell me what you should do here. So. Think about it this way. Can you scroll a bit to the right? OK, yeah, sure. There you go. Uh, the reason that you're getting an error or context or listener might be because your imports are not accurate. Just check on the imports. I can uh, share the imports again at the end of this presentation with you so that you can like, 
do a thorough check on if the imports are correct. But there might be an error because your imports are not right. Try Alt and Enter, my friend. It'll show you what the problem is with your code. Right. Uh, we don't want to track steps on pause. We on pause is when you step away from your application. Your application is running in the background, but we don't want uh, an application to run in the background and access our sensors. That is something which is a breach. This is some sort of a breach. Uh, that is something we don't want our applications to do. When it's not up on screen, we're not using that app, it should not track our movements. So what it is that we need to do here. Now, I'm going to make this a little easier for you. And then you're going to tell me what you need to do. And you'll, be, you'll love it. So there are two steps that we did here, right? The first one was ensure that it was running. The second one was to register the listener. So what is it that we should do on on pause? The exact opposite of that. What is it? Let me know in the comment section. Yes, the first one is absolutely correct. We should set running to false. It's not running. Our application is not on display here. It's not on the on the forefront. It's in the background. So first up, absolutely correct. And I'm going to put that right in. Uh, if you, all right. And there you go. All right. So first up, we want to set running equals to false. We're going to set that variable. And second up, we want to stop sensor manager. How do we stop sensor manager? Any ideas? Any ideas? Any ideas, my friends? Uh, everything is working, but my zero and steps are still over each other. Try top to the bottom off and introduce your variable there. Uh, I'll share my activity. I'll share my code at the end of it so you can see what's wrong with it. But you're probably missing out the ID and you're still work like adding a pair into it. And that is the reason it's happening. Uh, any ideas on how we can stop sensor manager? For sensor manager to get active, like get activated in your terms and listen to it, we used register listener. So very simple. You need to unregister listener. Absolutely. We have that answer in a comment section. Avnish, great job at that. Uh, let me just quickly bring my screen back up and then write the code for you. So yes, what you need to do is you need to do, uh, get a sensor manager here. And then I'm already adding the question mark. You know what it is. You need to unregister the listener. And now it's asking just for a context, a listener context, and we can get that from this. And that's it. That all is there in the on pause code. Very simple. Very simple. Magically simple. I mean, you can see uh, how easy it was to write the on pause code for you. It's just simple, plain logic that you wanted to apply. That this is something that we did previously. On pause, we just want to, you know, rewind that and get that back. And this is how we achieve it. Everyone on board? Everyone? Let me know in the comment section if up until this point everything is clear because now I'm going to write the last function which is on sensor changed. And after that, we are done and through. And we are right about on time. And it's all amazingly, um, I mean, it's amazing we're right on time. Yes, incredible. Now we need to increment count and set the text to text view. That is absolutely what we're going to do next. Clear, 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 clear. OK, I want to ask one more question before we move ahead. And that question is, how confident do you feel about developing Android applications while working through the scope? Because the main, so the reason that I am uh, developing a sensor application and I really love a step counter is because it helps you get started. And if you've never worked on an Android application before, it's very simple to make and that you can understand uh, the basics of it. Now, you, I am super glad to see that you feel very, very confident. And I'm so proud to see all of that. Can you repeat the super class part? Absolutely. Don't worry about it. Let me just explain that to you uh, by pulling up that part. OK, so now uh, I talked about the super class. Anytime we use this, the reason that we use this is because this is the super class that we've already created. This is our class main activity. This is app combat activity and sensor. You can see that it's calling a super class and it's calling an on create function. This on create function is an app combat activity. And if you want to access that, you want to access the super class. That's it. As simple as that. All good, everyone. How excited and hyped are you about the final context of sensor change? This is the final segment of our uh, basically application. And this is going to be lovely. You're going to get the hang of it. And post this. That's as easy uh, as earning a point. This, the second you submit this application, you earn yourself a point on the init board. OK, how do I get the to-do reason? That is something that was already there, but you can also get it. So if you add a to-do and you add a reason, like you add, like write to-do and then just add a text to it, you get that. Uh, 
as simple. All right, let's talk about this one, the sensor change. Now, as mentioned, I've already mentioned before, this is where we update the UI, right? How do we update the UI? If, if there are any changes in a particular event, if there's a changes, change in the sensor, for example, you took a step, heard a change, that is when we need to update our text from zero to one and set a text. And then keep on, keep on incrementing it and moving it as soon as we are complete, right? We have to do that. Now, how to achieve that? First off, what's the first thing that we should ensure? We should ensure that the app is running, isn't it? That is where the running variable comes in place. Because we need to ensure that the app is running. It should not make changes to the UI if the app is not running. It should not have that. So if it's running, only then it updates the changes. Now, we need to ensure that we um, you know, set the events text uh, to value. So let's get that. You remember we use uh, the steps what was the label that we used for this one? We use steps value. Steps value. Let's see if we can access that. Okay, it's not giving access to that. No worries. Generally, content gives access to that. There might be some issue, but no worries. We can fix this. We can fix this with a simple one. And this is something every one of you, Java folks, you can use this as well. So listen to it. So we will create a variable steps. This one, I'm creating a variable steps. And what we want is uh, to give it a type. So remember, we have a text view type here. And this is what I'm going to access here. So what I'm trying to do is I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm trying to get this 0. I'm trying to get this 0 on Kotlin file. And I'm trying to update that 0 to a particular value. Easy, simple. All right. So I need a text view in place. So let's get that text view up here. We have that widget. Yes, let's do this. Amazing, incredible. I love to see it. So we have our text view in place. Now we have initialized our variable. Uh, we have actually given it a type, We've not initialized it yet. How do we initialize it? We find the view. There's a function here, which is find view by ID. And the steps, why not? Why need a text view? Because, um, so what we want to do here is we want to get access to all the functions that come along with accessing an element of a text view. Now, what we need is that zero, whatever zero that was there, that was not an integer, if you remember. It was a text view, right? We added that to the elements folder in the activity main file. That is why we need a text view, and we need to get that. And in order to get that, we need it to get it by ID. That is the reason that we created that ID in the first place. We get that view by the ID, and we use this function to achieve that. So what it requires here is it requires an ID, which is an ID is a form of an integer, but right now we need that ID. So what we will do here is we're going to get the steps, uh, steps value. Autocomplete is not working. All right, I'm just going to have to type it again. So we need the ID. Our ID is the resource ID. And now we need there are two IDs present, there's step label and step value. So we need the steps value, right? This is what we need to update. So we will do that. And this is it. This is what you write uh, about the code. Let me take in questions first, and then I'm going to just put in and write type in the last statement of this app. OK, yes, r.id. That is what exactly what I use. So r.id is basically resource ID. It's in the resource folder, then ID, and then we need the steps value. This is the, this is it. How can you submit a challenge? Very good question. At the end of the stream, I'll, uh, I'll show you how you can submit that challenge. But uh, if you want to submit it right now, if you're done with it, you can go to uh, this link, which is hackp.ac slash init. Get access to the week long form, I think, or uh, the day form, I think. Yeah, it's the day challenge. So you get access to the day form and then make a submission. If you want to submit it, I mean, submit the screenshot of any challenges, you do it that way. If you want to submit this challenge, this particular thing that I'm doing on right now, you go ahead and submit it on this day's dev post, uh, which is which is another link you can find it on the same happy.ac slash init link. Sounds good. All right. Let's continue. Let's continue and complete our entire code. So now that the steps value is done, if in, in a case, the event is not null. Uh, let's not just do that first. So let's just try on the tip, steps dot text thing, right? So how do we get that? Steps is the uh, variable we initialize, and text is basically a set or a get text. Now we need to set our text so we get our access to our text. And now what we need is we need to update the value. Now how do we get that value? The value is in this event argument that we just received. The event is a sensor event. Whenever there's a change in that event. 
it will give it will call this function on sensor changed and it will send the event to you now in order to get that event what we need is that event contains a value it's an array structure of a sensor event and it contains an array of values and the first uh, value is the most recent value that you have it keeps on updating so the first value the zeroth index contains the value for your latest uh, sensor update and how you do that you get access to the event which is already there this is the event that we are accessing and then we can uh, like get access to it so we can see what all functions we have here we have values which is a float array this contains the values that we want this contains the value of the function and the zeroth index contains the value the event value of change sensor it's again in the docs it's all in the docs somebody created this uh, you know uh, this somebody created this class and they've created all of these and now you need to just access those to create your class so you have this but it's still showing an error and the reason it's showing an error is because this value does not return a string and steps.txt needs a string so type problem now what you can do is you can either do a to string you can call that you can fix this issue or what you can do is simply you can go ahead and do this either way is completely fine with me and this is how you fix it but hey there is still an error there is still an error and this is the error which is another surrounding it with null check so we just fix that error and voila it's done that is it now i'm going to come back for questions but this is how we did it so just to give you a brief on what we did on sensor change if the application was running we got the id uh, we got the um uh, the, we got the view that we created the text view that was that zero text view that we created and uh, for that we updated the text with the event value now there's a question why will it, that ever be null and the reason that that can be null is for example there is no event change even and a function is called by chance and you just introduce a null to it in order to avoid that null pointer exception we should not update the text in case the value is null because then it will crash the app and we don't want that so that is why we have an event null uh, event not equal to null check here cool 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 let me come back to the screen and see all right friends now is the time to ask your questions in the comment section let me see facing error in steps value in xml area uh present can you tell me what is it that you like where is it that you're facing the error so that we can help you like can you start the app yeah yeah of course when you start the app for the first time it might not be reading into it like it's, it's it, it is a scenario where you know your sensor event you run into an issue where it's null the value you don't have a value there and that is the reason in order to avoid that in order to avoid a case where you don't have a value as again there this is something which is so beautiful about kotlin it helps you avoid those null pointer exceptions please scroll up absolutely i will do that for you which one do you want to see you want to see the on create the on resume or the on pause this has changed i can't adjust the positions let me show you the activity main file once more and then you can see that uh, I'm going to show you the code once. Uh, let me see. Prasan, let me know which of these ish things you're facing an issue with, and I'm going to explain that to you. There's a text view. We created a margin top. Check these constraints. It should be top to bottom off, start to start off, and end to end off. OK, wait, hold on. So many, so many issues all at once. Facing an error in the on resume sections. Can you please show the resume function? Line 36. OK, OK, all right. Let's just go ahead and show the on resume function first. And if you're facing issues on line number 30, it's basically on top of and add ID a step label. So this is something that I told you that you might be missing. You not you. This might be parent. So if you want to fix that, it'll be all fine. Let's come back to the main activity. This is the on resume function. Let me just zoom that up a bit for you all. I zoom out it. All right. You should be able to see it now. All right. Where are you facing issues? Uh, this the code is up on screen, but I need to know where you're facing exactly facing issues so that I can help you debug those.
Override function? Which one? Uh, I build my apps. Apps are not implementing. Uh, is your app crashing in any way, or uh, is there any error that you've missed, or anything that you've missed? Did you register your listener? Did you check if it's updating on sensor delay UI? I mean, that's where you need to check the code. App is absolutely functioning if you follow the steps, but you might have missed something. So uh, that's something that I have to get into. There might not be an error. That might be something you missed. Uh, either you missed a register listener, or, or probably there's a delay in load, or let's say there's a wrong import. Even the dog is not displaying. I would have to look at your code in order to get give you a precise answer. I mean. The steps uh, should be increment whenever there should be a listener. So you might want to check. Uh, why don't you log the data that your event values are sending and check that? That is how you can debug the solution. Uh, don't try shaking it. Walk. We shall walk. <laughs> Step sex uh, event value zero. Yes, this would face an error uh, because you've not added the null value uh, thing to it. If you add alt and enter, it will fix itself. I did it that way. Alt and enter, it'll, I just add a null check around it. Yeah, right now you have to remove it from the ADB, but for uh, you don't have to walk uh, per se, Raj. That was for Vishal in order to check if the app is, his app is working or not. For you, you just need to check your logs to see that is the event being called at or not. It's displaying some value or the other. Are you getting an error? What's the error, uh, Manchika, on line 27? That is just a variable running equals true. So that should not be the case. Is there an error I missed? Someone is having an error and I missed it. I just feel that I have. but. Yeah, do it on resume uh, and try doing, actually not on on resume, do it on sensor event changed and try that and see if you are still getting that sensor activity. This might be a hardware issue also, depending on your phone sensor, but that is what I'm trying to check. Show the XML page, do the cross check it, type the same, still getting the right error lines. Okay. Uh, like check what the error exactly says so that I can help you fix it. Can you show the XML page? Absolutely, I can. Steps value showing an error. Uh, did you check if you uh, added the ID correctly? I added the ID steps value. If you have added something again, then it'll show an error. And also, you have to find view by ID. So that should be an R dot ID steps value, not just steps value. And that might be also be the error. I'll tell you what, I can share the code with you. And then you can see uh, if there is something that you missed. Because it's difficult to actually fix issues, uh, which I'm not sure why it's showing an error. If you, if you just tell me that you're getting an error on line 45 or line 18 or whatever line it is, I can't help you because I don't under, I don't, I don't know what it is that you missed in your application that's you're facing an error. If this, uh, this is facing an error, make sure that you've added a null pointed exception to it or just tell me what the error is about so that it's fine. Right, let me just add this to your So, Shruti, maybe you want to try this out. I just, uh, I'll just add the code in the comment. So maybe you want to try this out. It'll help you. Oh, an error was occurred. I was not. All right, you have that. Cool. Um, it works. Thanks a lot. Learned a lot. All right, and you share that. Uh, so again, it will not be possible for me to show the output uh, that way because, again, it's connected to the ADB. And I'm not actually connecting my mobile. I don't have an Android mobile handy right now. I'm going to use the emulator, and I couldn't do that for you. But uh, I can check the code from, of course. Uh, 
You don't have to type in context. If you type in context, that was wrong. If this line is showing an error, you just need to need to type in this. Remove that word. Bunch of uh, that's for you. All right. Uh, stop sharing all of your code in the comment section because it's difficult to read like this. I mean, if I if I actually if you. I show it to you what is coming to me. It's just jargon. So what I'll tell you is I'm going to share the link to my code base in the comment section. Give me a minute and then uh, we'll help you from there. I'm going to get this app working in no time, friends. Just hold on for a minute. My laptop is burning up. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get that up on GitHub and then I'm going to share that with you in Discord. And still you're facing issues, let me know by then. Oh, it's working now? Incredible, incredible. So, all right, a quick head count. Uh, everyone who all finished this application and have a working application in place. Right now in the comment section, I just need a quick count of everyone who has done up until here, who understands the code base, and who are confident about that application. Quick head count. Everyone, now is the time to post in uh, the comment section. I can see Vanshika, it's working for you. Who else? Anubhav is also done. Dhruv is also done. Uh, Anjali is done. And then we have uh, Adam, you should definitely do it. Why have you not done it? <laughs> Literal food done. And then there is Agam Joth working and it's running. Adam, but I'm in, my, in bed. What time is it for you, Adam, anyway? I mean, I'm definitely not sure why are you awake if it's like super early for you. App is running, steps are not incrementing, the green being. All right, so Raj, uh, you might want to check if you're getting that events in place. I mean, uh, if you connect, even connected on ADV, you might have to move around your phone a bit to see uh, if you know, you're getting those values through your phone. Because it's working for a lot of, uh, like almost every one of them. So this might be a hardware issue or something that's related to your laptop. But don't worry, I'll share the code on Discord so that you can check on it. Working on it. 9.39 a.m. Adam, it's 9.39 a.m. If you went to bed on at 4 a.m., now is the time to sleep. Get up, complete this application, earn yourself a point, and it's, it'll, it'll all be fine. <laughs> Go back to sleep. All right. Awesome. Incredible. So I can see that it's working for most of you, and I'm glad that I was able to help you do it. Let me stop my screen share and come back live. So friends, I can see that most of you are already done with it and I am super, super excited to see you all. Thank you so much for joining this session. Uh, I hope you all had a great time. Let me know in the comment section, how was it? Let me know if you understood every piece of content that I delivered correctly because I wanted to make it beginner friendly. That was the call uh, and the need of the hour for it. We wanted to make it all very feasible for you uh, in this one. So we wanted to ensure that you know you have the best of your time in it is all about getting started as the name suggests so it's your turn to actually create that app get started with android application and if you have any issues please feel free to reach out to me i'm always there to help you and i am glad that you all had a great time if there are any questions feel free to ask them in the discord server right now it's all about celebrating that you completed your fitness app and you can focus on your fitness goals now this is another one of those incredible sessions that we did, creating a health app for MLH in it. And I am glad that you did it. So thank you, thank you so much for joining in. And I, I am I can't be super proud of you. But make sure, friends, this is really, really, really important. There's this is important for two reasons. One, you get a point if you make a tweet. And second, you get to show up and have bragging rights for all of the amazing work that you do on in it. So make sure that you tweet on this using this 
And what this is, it's tagging ML hacks, tagging my name. Uh, that's me, Sasha Kakor. You can tag. I love to see all of your comments. So just go ahead, please, and tag me to all of your tweets. Share some of these interesting insights. Like, for example, yesterday our server broke with 100 members. Like, we broke the server with 100 members for Sketchful. And like today, we did a couple of other things, some of interesting features that we achieved and some of the interesting things that we did. So go ahead, make a tweet for that. Use the hashtag MLH in it and do tag me for all of your interest on all of your interesting tweets. Love to see all your insights. Love to see what you learn and do share everything that you build and learn with everyone in your guild. Share it and make sure that you have everyone on board. So if anyone missed this session, it's your responsibility to help them out so that they can learn something new. And that's all for this day. Thank you so much for joining in. And this, uh, my name is Sashra Kakor, and I'm going to sign off now. Thank you so much, everyone. And have a good one. All right. Thank you so much for those lovely comments. Um, special code. I don't have a special code. If you need a special code, you can add my name, Sashraka. I mean, I think that should be it. That's not, I don't have any other special code per se, but it's just Sashraka, my name. All right. Yes, GitHub link, you'll get that in uh, the Discord server. Don't worry about it. All right, thank you so much, friends. I'm going to sign off now. Have a good day and have a great week at Init. If you need anything else, feel free to ping us and tag us in your different tweets. We'd love to see all of them. See ya.